Hello, fellow ANTS participants and anyone else that might watch. I'm Daniel Martin, and I'm going to talk about two types of lattice reduction problems, a short vector problem and simultaneous approximation. And I'll talk about the idea behind the paper I'm presenting, which is basically that the two are equivalent. So here are some informal definitions for these problems. Uh, a short vector problem, uh, you start with a set of vectors, and you're asked to find a short non-zero integer combination. Or in other words, you'd like a short element of the lattice generated by the original input vectors. So this is commonly called SVP, or a prox SVP, if you don't insist that your output vector is an actual shortest vector of the lattice. And as an example here, there are three three-dimensional vectors, and we'd like to know what integers we could put in place of the red question marks to make the output short in whatever your uh, norm of choice is. And in at least the L2 norm, the shortest vector, or A shortest vector, is 1, 3, negative 1, and those are the integers that you would need to get it. Simultaneous approximation problem starts with just one vector, and we're asked to find a multiple that's near an integer point, meaning all of its coordinates, the output coordinates, are close to integers. So here's an example, another three-dimensional vector. What integer could we put in place of the red question mark? If you use 106, you see in the output there that each of them is uh, one or two hundredths away from the nearest integer. So uh, it turns out for a vector like this that has irrational uh, entries, there's no limit to how close you could get to an integer point and still not land on it. So it's pretty common to bound the, uh, the multiple that you might take. So if our bound was, say, 200, then 106 would be a great choice. Or alternatively, if the input vector is rational, then another possibility would just be to exclude uh, the trivial solution, um, multiples of the least common denominator. <clears throat> All right, so here's a brief history of the subject, um, which should probably start with the Euclidean algorithm, but uh, that, that would skew the timeline in an unattractive way. So we'll start with uh, Lagrange-Gauss uh, in 1773, or around then, uh, solving um, the lattice reduction problem in two dimensions. And I'll mention what I mean on the next slide, uh, what it looks like to solve lattice reduction. Then in 1842, uh, Dirichlet began the study of lattice reduction in arbitrary dimensions when he uh, looked into simultaneous approximation. Then in, in 1982, there was a big bang in the subject. The LLL algorithm solves, uh, among other things, a prox SVP to within a factor of root 2 to the n, and that's been improved since. Um, where here n is the dimension of the input lattice. And basically what that means is the shortest vector output by LLL is at most root 2 to the n times longer than the length of the actual shortest vector in the input lattice. Uh, later that year, uh, well, I, I think it was published actually in 83 and maybe again in 85, Ligarius uh, used a trick from the LLL paper to reduce simultaneous approximation to short vector problems. Um, and uh, our goal today is going to be to at least outline the reverse reduction. In 1996, Aitai and then um, after that, Aitai and Dwork showed that uh, the hardness of lattice reduction, or in their case, the assumed hardness of unique SVP, um, could be used to uh, in cryptography. They built a crypt crypto system based on its assumed hardness, and that's um, helped to popularize the, the study of the subject. And then just last year, um, Agrawal, um, he's the A in the AKS primality test, um, showed, uh, gave the reverse of the Ligarius reduction, showed how short vector problems could be solved with a simultaneous approximation oracle. And, uh, and we're going to uh, give an outline of, of, a, of a different technique than his, but I'll reference uh, his YouTube video at the end if you'd like to check out both possibilities. And then there's us today, ANTS 2020. Okay. So uh, here's an overview um, of what we're going to try to do. So basically, you, in lattice reduction, we're starting with a bad basis, and we'd like to get a good one. So what I mean by bad basis, visually, the vectors are, are far from orthogonal, but what makes it bad? Well, one thing that you might want to do with a lattice, one thing that's often done, is you use your lattice points to approximate things that are not in the lattice. So in this case, 11.6, 4.2, uh, denoted there with a, a purple triangle. I'd like to find an element of this lattice generated by the blue and red vectors that's close to it. So here's what I mean. Here's, for example, one blue minus a red. We're sort of zigzagging our way over there. Uh, we won't try and get there that way. That might take a while. Um, so instead, let's let's try and actually solve this equation in the top left. 
question mark, question mark, uh, should roughly be equal to that matrix product. So we can do that multiplication. We get out 13.4, negative 22.9. That's what we'd like to put in there. But remember, for a lattice, these have to be integers. So at least my best guess would be 13, negative 23, rounding each one to the nearest integer. That gives 9, negative 2, which you see it's marked there with the little green dot in the picture. So that looks... I guess, okay, it's shorter than uh, one red vector's length away uh, from the purple triangle. Let's go ahead and reveal the rest of the lattice and, and see how close we got. So I don't know how many better choices there would have been, maybe 15 or so, um, but it looks like uh, our, our choice certainly wasn't as good as possible. Uh, and the reason for that is because of the basis we were given. If I told you from the get-go that all it takes to be in this lattice is that uh, the uh, x-coordinate has to be a multiple of 3 and the y-coordinate has to be a multiple of 2, in other words, if I'd given you that orthogonal basis instead, it would have been much easier to approximate that point. You can see the nearest multiple uh, of 3 and 2 respectively is 12 and 4. So that's the best lattice approximation point. And that's because it was so easy to find because that basis is easier to work with. Uh, and now that we know that the closest point is 12, 4, we see that our best choice, we can multiply 12, 4 by the inverse of that original matrix to see that we should have taken, instead of 13, negative 23, we should have taken 14 copies of the blue vector and negative 24 copies of the red vector. But how could you have predicted that? How could you have predicted which way to round? And in general, even if you did know that rounding up or down would give you the, the, the right coefficient, you can see that in n dimensions, you already have an exponential number of choices, 2 to the n. So this problem gets hard as the dimension increases. You can also see from this example uh, why something like this why this problem might be useful in cryptography. If you and I wanted, say, say you wanted to send me a secret over the internet, if I have this great basis for, for, for the lattice, 3002, um, I could make publicly available this bad basis, 61438, which describes the exact same lattice. You want to send me a secret, you could encode it as an integer pair, in this case, 14, negative 24. Multiply 14, negative 24 by this publicly public bad basis, and you get out 12, comma 4, this little green dot. Don't share the green dot because then people could multiply by the inverse of that bad basis and, and figure out 14, negative 24. Just perturb it ever so slightly so that I, with my good basis, can very quickly find out what the nearest uh, lattice point is and get out your secret, while other people with this bad basis, unless they have a good lattice reduction algorithm, can't figure out your secret. So in this case, this is an example of using what's called the closest vector problem. Um, and, it, and it doesn't in any way uh, represent or closely mirror um, today's uh, lattice reduction uh, uses in cryptography. But again, at the end, I'll, I'll give a reference to um, Regev's LWE if, you, if you're interested in how lattice reduction is used in cryptography. All right, so now I'm going to go back to our two original problems, and I'm going to talk about uh, what separates them, and that'll give us an idea of how to reduce from one to the other. So both of these matrices have the same determinant, 5 cubed, but one of them is uh, very special. It's the one on the right. The one on the left, actually, the first three rows were generated randomly, um, and then the last row I computed in order to give a determinant of 5 cubed. But since the first three rows are, are computed randomly, you might expect that just because the, the determinant of the whole matrix is 5 cubed, just because it doesn't have full rank mod 5, um, that doesn't mean that it's 3 by 3 minors don't have full rank. And since they're computed randomly, they probably don't. And in this case, that's true. The, the top left 3 by 3 minor, for example, has a determinant not divisible by 5. So this matrix has rank 3. Uh, modulo 5 over F5, the field of five elements. And that's not the only um, uh, 3 by 3 minor you could have taken. Here's another one. You, so you could have used the first, third, and fourth columns, and that would have given you full rank over F5. And I say that's typical because, again, uh, the full determinant being divisible by 5 doesn't imply anything about its principal minors. As you could guess, that's not true of the one on the right. This is the matrix that I've chosen so that each of its 3 by 3 minors is divisible by 5. It doesn't matter which ones you take. And actually, it's, the situation is worse here. This matrix is chosen so that each of its 2 by 2 minors is even divisible by 5. So this doesn't even have rank 2 mod 5. This matrix only has rank 1. So you could take uh, any of these, none of these vectors are 0 mod 5, so you could take any of the four vectors that you see as your, your one generator over F5, 
Um, so I took the first one and I called that x. Another way of saying that would be over the integers, which is you know the, the lattice that we care about. Um, over the integers, this is generated by x and five times the standard ordered basis. So you might recognize that as very similar to a simultaneous approximation problem. In this case, a pretty easy simultaneous approximation problem. You could just reduce x modulo 5 and see that a shortest vector in this case is negative 2, negative 2, negative 1, 1. Um, but it, it doesn't look exactly like simultaneous approximation because remember we wanted to find a multiple that put us near an integer point and this is finding a multiple of x that puts us near five times an integer point. But that's okay, just scale everything by five. It doesn't change the shape of the lattice at all. So we could solve this problem instead, taking multiples of x over five and finding what puts it near to something in z to the fourth, an integer point. So this is a simultaneous approximation problem. And you can see what makes it unique it has rank 1 over whatever that number is, in this case 5. Here's what it looks like visually. Uh, on the previous slide, uh, this D that's labeled in each of this, the, the scaled standard ordered basis, this D was 5 on the previous slide, and uh, here's X. So if we want to see what the full lattice looks like, we take multiples of X and we reduce it modulo D. So here's twice X shifted back to be in the cube, and here's 3 times X shifted back, and we keep doing this until we don't get anything new. And here's our lattice. It includes the blue points. I, well, if we wanted to draw the full lattice, we would then tile this cube uh, over all of three space, and, and that would show us the full lattice. OK, um, so this is generated by x and dz cubed. Or as we said, if you scale everything down by d, divide everything by d, you have a simultaneous approximation problem. But this is a very special case. Most lattices that have determinant divisible by d wouldn't have rank 1 mod d. Most of them would have some other vector. So let's say we have a more, a more general lattice reduction problem. So here I've thrown in an extra generator, y. And uh, this would generate, I don't know, 40 or so more points in this queue. I'm not going to draw all of them because that would just make it look too cluttered. But the point is that we now have rank 2 mod d. It's not simultaneous approximation. And the idea of the paper is, how do we take this, a problem like this, and reduce it to the very special case of simultaneous approximation? So that if, say, simultaneous approximation is more amenable to some, uh, maybe an attack by a quantum computer or something, uh, we have this reduction that shows that you could solve any short vector problem. All right, and the idea is this. Um, we, we, we can't change the rank mod d, but what we could do is we could take this outer cube and just shift it ever so slightly so that we, can, we do change the rank modulo what these three vectors are. And so in this particular case, I only have to shift one element of my scaled uh, standard basis, the y coordinate. If I shift it by this small element of the lattice, instead of the original cube now, I'm going to get something that looks like this. So I have c2 instead of 0, d0. C1 and C3 are still the scaled standard basis vectors, but I called them something different because in general you might have to shift all of them to make this work. <coughs> okay, so the point is that it still pretty much looks like a cube. Uh, it's a little bit off. Moreover, the cube still closely aligns with um, the axes. It's, it still looks like a scaled copy of the standard ordered basis. But now, with respect to this cube, it turns out we only need one generator. So I didn't, the, remember, there are lots of other points that are in this lattice that I didn't draw. In this case, the extra generator that I could use, there are lots of choices, is right here. I call it Z. So this C1, C2, C3, Z, is another generating set for this lattice that's generated by x, y, and dz3. Okay, so unlike before, I can't just scale things down. I scaled down by d earlier to make it simultaneous approximation. If I scale this down by d, c3, c1, and c2 divided by d does not give me integer points. Instead, I have to multiply by c1, c2, c3 inverse. In other words, the matrix with these as its columns. Um, and if I do that, multiplying that matrix inverse times z is going to give me some vector. That's going to be my input for simultaneous approximation. And multiplying c1, c2, and c3 by the inverse of that matrix gives me the identity. It gives me z cubed. So this becomes a, a, an ordinary simultaneous approximation problem. And the whole point is that we shifted um, ever so slightly that original cube so that multiplying by the inverse of this matrix doesn't change what it means to be short. 
at least not in an LP norm. Um, and so we've taken our, our arbitrary lattice reduction problem, which had rank 2 mod d, and we've turned it into a simultaneous approximation problem. And the simultaneous approximation input vector is the product of this matrix inverse times z. And again, the idea is that we had to shift small enough so that we still stayed a roughly scaled orthonormal uh, basis to preserve shortness. Okay, so that was a really sort of uh, brief overview of the idea. Uh, when I do the more in-depth talk on July 4th, um, I'll, I'll say uh, how you know that such a perturbation always exists, and then in the process, how do you find this extra vector z, and make sure that the perturbation is small enough so that when you perform the simultaneous approximation, you know that your output vector is still going to be short in the original lattice. Okay, uh, thanks so much for listening. Here are some references if you'd like to uh, look up anything that I talked about. I hope to see um, you on July 4th.